today um, back on our faithful F-150 uh, one of our shop trucks that we love dearly um, and for a while now it's had a little bit of a leak above the windshield and uh, so it's time to uh, deal with that as we're getting into the rainy season here in Florida um, did some research um, found that there's a special tool that you need uh, to remove the windshield trim uh, there's a couple different brands there, but actually uh, after taking some time to look at it, you want to pick one where um, it's got a sharp point. Um, I ended up getting the one I'll show you here in a moment um, from Summit Racing. It was just under six bucks, very inexpensive, um, and appears to do the job quite well. Um, so let's follow along with the trim removal and then show how we can apply some sealant and fix this leak. So this is the tool that we selected. Uh, there's a few out there, different shapes. Um, in, in my research what I found was that the, this end here needs to have a tip that comes to a very sharp point for it to work well. Um, and this one, made by the people at Stack. Um, seems to fit that bill, so we thought we'd give that one a try. Just one thing to note, um, on the packaging, um, it does show clearly that this tool should be inserted from the glass side of the trim and not the paint side. I will just caution you that some Ford forums actually suggest you use the tool from the paint side of the trim um, and I believe that is incorrect uh, so now let's follow along and I can show you how to use this tool and how to remove the trim all right so we take our trim tool and basically we're going to slide it in under the trim here and then what we're looking for is putting it in at an angle this sort of angle and sliding it until we find a clip once you find that clip then what you're going to do is apply a little sideways pressure and what that's going to do is let the trim pop up. So what I'm going to try and show you in this shot is how the clip works under the trim because it's not necessarily easy to uh, understand that without seeing it. Um, so I've got one that I've popped and I think if we get in here you can see the tip of the tool and how you're keeping the edge parallel to the windscreen frame and then how in this case I'm sliding it down and then you can see by moving the handle in this direction you can see how it's releasing that clip and that's what lets the windscreen trim come free. And you should start this process on one of the pieces that is on top so as you can see the side trim sits on top of the bottom trim so I'm starting on the side. Okay, so once you free up the side um, to where you can start to move the trim and lift it up like this, um, I separated the first clip, so down inside here uh, on the bottom piece, and then now is a good time to separate this sliding joint. You can see how the side just basically slides over the top of the base piece. Um, you can just pull this out sideways and then that will separate your side trim. And then as you pull it out, you can see this is how much overlap there is. And then the separate side trim will come free. So once you separate the base like this, if you've undone the clips on the side trim, you can move to the top and then you can just lower it. And then that will expose, expose the clips, which will do a quick close in on. You can see the, uh, you know, the design of them and what it is actually that that tool was doing. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment here with the tool inserted. Okay, so once you can see what the clips are like, you, you can see how this thing works. You basically slide the tool in like this, and then once you're in there, what you're doing is just using a little leverage like this, and then that's lifting the clip up, and that's just enough to pop the edge of the trim out. Um, and then the one thing to note 
um, you see this central post, the circular one, clips just are snapped onto that. So should you find any that are either too bent or rusted, they're inexpensive to replace and easy to replace. And so that's something you might want to consider while you're doing this job. So moving on to the top trim, the method is the same. Um, you just feel under there for the clips, apply a little leverage, pop that section up and then move on. Um, and similarly, the top trim is just overlapped in the middle, so I'll show you that. Here are the uh, clips that are in the top, looking a little bit more the worse for wear than the ones I had in the side. Okay, so having worked myself around both of the sides and the top, um, a couple of things to point out. Um, so this is a 94 F-150, um, and the clips along the side, which you can see I think in this shot, are what I'll consider to be a single clip. Um, and as I work around the top um, hopefully we can get a good shot yeah you can see that there's also single clips um, along the top here um, now actually a lot of Ford vehicles the top and bottom trim um, is held in with a double length clip um, where it's um, you know you almost have to tackle both sides of it with the tool to free it um, I guess I'm fortunate in that this one uh, just needed you know the one pressure application but you can see this is a this is what happens to the clips when they get exposed to the elements this one is almost rusted away and actually if you look in the center here you can see that little peg there should be a clip on that but I'm gonna say it's entirely rusted so I think the next part of the project for me is going to be shopping for these replacement clips um, so when I get back to the video, I'll tell you where I got them and the kind of price. I understand they're quite ex inexpensive and easy to get. Um, so I'll provide that information um, along with what I choose to use to add sealer across the top of the windshield, which is, you know, the purpose of this to stop the leak. So sort of moving on to the next phase of this, we've removed the trim. Um, and again, the reason I'm doing this is because the top of the windshield leaks on the driver's side. So I'm now in here investigating, you know, the gap. Um, the light's not so great, the sun's going down. Um, but as I'm looking in here, the good news is that I'm not really seeing a lot in the way of rust around the actual um, steelwork around the windshield. Uh, I was ready for this to be kind of perforated. Um, but actually, you know, as I look around here, um, there's a little debris in here which I'll clean out. Um, but actually, it looks pretty solid. So the good news for me uh, is it'll need some cleaning and then obviously more sealant adding there and I'll cover how we tackle that. Um, but at least that doesn't look like I'm looking at uh, any kind of steel repair, which is great news. Okay, so I finished inspecting the clips um, around the windshield. Um, and actually the ones on the side, um, on both sides of mine, appear to be in very good condition. Um, and really no good reason to replace them. Uh, different story with the ones across the top, which pretty much have all suffered from rust. Um, so I'm now going to hopefully show you if I can <laughs> steady my hand. So the removal of them should be as simple as getting hold of the front of the clip like this and pulling it firmly. And kind of like pulling a tooth, that's what happens. So there is the uh, that rusty clip, which is now going to be replaced. Okay, so we're back to uh, fixing the windshield leak on the F-150. Um, there's a number of ways, once you've taken the trim off, um, to find the source of the leak. Uh, and it really depends on your situation. You get a sense of where it is from where it's leaking on the inside, but the water can travel. Um, you can drizzle water on the outside um, and try and watch it. 
you know, with the trim removed on the inside is one method. Um, another method is to drizzle um, a solution of like dishwash soap and water into the channel around the window um, and then use something like a shop vac on blow on the inside and then see if you can see where the bubbles come out. That's another great way of locating it. In my case, um, I was very confident where the leak was um, and actually created just a small tool out of a piece of uh, wire hanger uh, which will just hook around the inside of, of the windshield and what this let me do is use this to remove any debris um, you know other loose material that needs to go before it's sealed up um, but actually in my case also to sort of find where the leak was um, so I located it pretty central above the steering wheel and um, I'm confident that that's where I need to apply sealer and um, so so that's that's what I'll be doing. On the topic of sealer, um, again a lot of debate. Um, I plan to actually use a Permatex product and it's specifically made for windshield repair. Um, I'm confident that it's going to seal what I have as a leak. Um, you will hear from people you know professionally in the field that actually don't particularly like using silicon based products uh, they say that with the temperature variance in the end you know that they can fail and you should use more of a professional product uh, but again in this instance I'm pretty confident this will work uh, the characteristic I like about this product is unlike um, normal silicon sealer this is a little bit more liquid um, and actually specifically designed to sort of run into uh, little cracks and pores um, and for what I'm working with here that's going to be what I need. So I recommend masking the windshield and the edge of the metalwork around the windshield opening um, that's just going to limit any kind of cleanup you have to do especially if you um, get a little less careful you know with the sealant along the way. Uh, mine's got a pretty easy to use nozzle and is clear so not too big of a deal but still want to be careful. And then the other thing that I recommend um, inspect the clips that hold the windshield trim in place. Uh, what I found is that actually um, some of the ones on the side um, let me see if I can get a close look. Like this one is still probably serviceable. But then as we get up to the top, uh, you can see, you know, there's been a little bit of rust going on here. This one, you know, it's probably could work, but not ideal. So I bought a pack of replacements and I suggest taking the old ones out. A uh, long nose pair of pliers is all you should need. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay, so moved it around a little, and now you can see if I come in a little close, it just comes out like this. Okay, once you've removed the clips you plan to replace, you take a shop cloth with some alcohol um, and then get this up in the gap here. This is going to clean away the years of debris and dirt that are in there. Um, and the alcohol will just get you a clean surface um, so that once that's flashed off you know whatever sealant you choose to use is going to have a good surface to adhere to. Okay so next up we're going to get the Permatex ready. Um, you've probably used their products before um, but for anybody that's doing this for the first time if you take a tube of their product there's a screw cap and all of them will come with a seal. So if you look in the end here, there's a silver seal. And the nice folks at Permatex provide you a screw cap with a spike. So all you have to do is push that spike into the seal and that'll open it up for you. And once you've done that, you're going to take the nozzle and 
decide what thickness of bead you want and then that will determine you know if you cut it here 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 the lower down obviously the uh, thicker bead of product you're going to have come out and you can cut it with scissors uh, exacto knife or a pair of sharp side cutters so this is going to be quite difficult to see but actually um, as per the description the product flows quite well and you just have to move it along slowly apply some even pressure and it does seem to flow down into the leak okay so I flowed the product in here this may be a little tricky to see but it actually worked how I hoped so I don't know if you can see how it's self leveled across the top of the windshield and for me that's where the leak was so this is why I was confident that the Permatex product might be the good solution for what I was trying to do um, all that's left now is to replace the clips and then after that uh, reinstall the trim but I'm gonna let the sealant dry for a while um, it says it needs an hour um, as a minimum and in fact I'm probably going to let it dry overnight so I don't disturb it and then come back and fit the clips and trim in the morning okay so now we're on the what should be the uh, final part of uh, sealing up the windshield on our F-150 uh, the uh, next stage is going to be replacing the damaged or rusted windshield clips um, found this pack online uh, very easy to find there's multiple manufacturers I would just suggest uh, reading the comments uh, some of the products are a little cheaper um, but suggested that they weren't very robust um, so I opted for these ones um, seem quite well made um, one interesting note our trucks are 94 you know the pack is labeled forward to 93 you know, but as you can tell, you know, looking at the two clips here, um, it does appear to be the same clip. So I think we're good. Uh, so now we'll be taking our long nose pliers and uh, just literally slide those onto the pins in the opposite of the manner that we pulled out the old ones. And just to note, the. Uh, the clip goes in this way around. We'll see if we can put this in with one hand. Yeah, looks like it might fight me. Yeah, it's pretty close. You get the idea. I'll just uh, clip it the last little bit here. Um, but there's a close up of how it should go in. So when you're putting these clips back in, replacing the old ones with the new ones. Um, one tip I found, you know, on some of the posts, um, the clip's pretty tough to push in with the long nose pliers. Um, and tried a couple things, and in the end, the thing that I found that actually worked was taking a clip like this, and then putting another pair of pliers on the side of it like this, and essentially just spreading the gap where the post goes just a teeny bit uh, it doesn't need much but it'll make the difference between the thing popping on with it if you hold it with a pair of regular pliers um, or just fighting you so uh, that was what I found to be the easy way they still snap on so I'm sure the trim will be nice and firm when it's replaced okay so once all the clips are in place um, now it's time for the final step replacement of the trim just one little tip, if you had rusty clips, um, take a look carefully on the inside of the trim. I'll see if I can line this up. Um, right in there, I don't know if you can see, but there's a broken off piece of a clip. You want to make sure you get in all these pieces of trim and remove anything like that because that's going to really get in the way of replacing it. So I'm just going to pause here now and fish that out. So. Now we're on trim removal. You can see I started uh, putting one piece in at the top. That's the first piece to go in. Um, and then after that, for me, I can either choose to put this side in, 
you know, or the next top piece and then the side. That's going to be the order. Um, I wanted to just point out one little thing. When you're about to replace the trim, before you do that, take a moment to inspect the top edge of the trim, like this. Um, and you can usually see where the clips sat. Just make sure that it isn't indented from a previous um, installation because that'll make it hard to put it in. If anything, you want to get a pair of pliers and just gently ease the top edge of the trim where the clips are up just a little bit. And then you'll find that the installation goes a lot easier. Okay, so next, slip the uh, piece of trim in here at the top and then there's a clip right around here. You want to make sure you can get that one in place first. After that, we're going to come down to the bottom here and we're going to slide the trim in, you know, so that it lines up nicely. You know, it's an old truck, so the good thing is there'll be a mark as to where it needs to go. So I'm just going to try and get that in about there. Then after that, we're going to use our installation tool. And again, I probably can't do this all the way, but the idea is you put the tool in like this. We slide down till we find the next clip, which is here. Then we're going to hook it, use that kind of motion. And then I'm going to need by the hand to push the trim in, but you get the idea. So once that piece is in, you just use the same technique. Again, taking our removal tool, slide it against the glass, down here till you get to the next clip. Use this kind of a rocking motion. That'll ease the clip open. And then with your other hand, just push the trim in. Just work slowly, because again, you're using glass. Um, but actually, as you work your way down, you'll be able to snap it all in place and it's all connected up. Okay, so there we have it. Trim reinstalled. Um, looking good. Time to take it through a car wash and see if the uh, leak has gone away. Um, just one little tip I forgot to mention. Um, you know, when those pieces of chrome trim um, are off from around the windshield, that's the perfect time to give them a clean. You can get right into the edges. It's really difficult once it's replaced. Uh, so uh, take a moment to polish those up and keep the truck looking good. Thanks again for listening and uh, watch out for more content from Low Tech Garage.